everybody, I'm David with Bolivar Live, and once again, I'm here with Chandra. Uh, we're not going to talk Twia because we've still got another week to go before the decisions made by the Twia. Uh, who makes the decisions? Commissioner, the commissioner, commissioner. Richard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and actually, uh, Chandra is going to be gone mm -hmm. next week, um, but she's going to keep me informed. And so, we're. I'm still going to do a show on the decision that was made on the 15th, um, but. We're actually recording this show on the 9th, and today we're going to talk about Milton because it is barreling down on the middle coast of Florida, the Tampa area, Sarasota, I think, um, and it's moved, I think, a little south, then it came back a little north, but they're talking, you know, storm surge, it's, they've called for a mandatory evacuation, if I'm not mistaken. Um Let's talk about, you know, uh, I saw a video, Chandra, one guy said, I'm going to stay here. And he was right just south of Tampa. Because yeah. I've got hurricane force windows and they're good for a two by four at 140 mile an hour. And I was thinking, yeah, but it don't take into account that half mile wide tornado. <laughs> that's that's true. And that's I think that's one of the things that people get a little overconfident whenever we build these houses to withstand uh, hurricane force winds. First of all, um, I don't believe that the design criteria in that particular area is quite high enough for some of the winds that we're going to be experiencing. Um, the the design criteria in you know, like down in the Keys is like 180 miles an hour. Yeah, they, they're a little bit more exposed. But as you move up the state, it's like 170, 160, 150. So in that range, it's about, you know, 150-ish design criteria. Um, and everything is address specific. The wind, you know, design is address specific. So um, we have a, um, a, a, uh, a hazard map that we put in the address and we can look up exactly what design criteria we need to use for that specific location. So it's really um, important to, to know that even if you have impact rated windows, um, those windows can still break. It's kind of like if you get into a car wreck and your right. windshield shatters, it's got that film on it that it keeps, you know, you're trying to keep that windshield intact and all that glass from, from hitting you. Uh, but we have the same, same thing with impact windows. I mean, it's not that the window can't be broken. It's not the window can't be penetrated. It's just that the whole thing maybe won't come out. Right. But you're also assuming that the window is installed perfectly, that there's no other damage to the frame, that you don't have, you know, a, a, a leak in your flashing that's weakened your wood structure or your concrete right. structure that, that could uh, prevent that window from performing correctly. So I think it's, um, it's more about the the building being able to not have to be rebuilt after the storm not necessarily you being using it as a storm shelter it, yeah. that's not a good idea that's not what homes are designed for they're well, not designed to be storm shelters um storm when we design storm shelters uh fire stations uh police stations schools we design those to a different, what they call risk factor. And so it actually bumps that wind speed up. Um, so it can take a higher design uh, pressures on that building. So those are actually designed differently. They actually have little safe rooms where you have rooms with no windows in them and right. things like that where we have protection. So um, that's why they say, hey, if you're here, go to the storm shelter. It's not because, it's not because, um, you know, you don't have a home, it's because Those your home really isn't designed for that. And, yeah. and just like you said, I mean, one of the things that they were talking about this morning was that right around the eye wall, there's a, a, a black line. And I don't know if you saw it, there's a black line there. That black line is that area where they have these uh, little they, they have a specific name, but they're basically little mini tornadoes. Right. And <clears throat> those tornadoes are going to be you know, for this kind of storm with the low pressures that we're experiencing and, you know, the tightness of that eye wall, I mean, those could be very intense, like EF three, four, five. And so you could have very localized high damages um, 
from these little tornadoes that are coming out of the eye wall. So I've seen some video already online where you see the, the little funnel coming down, you know, out of the cloud, mm -hmm. out of the clouds. So it's already starting. I mean, I know we ha don't have landfall until, you know, right. overnight. Uh, That's what I did in life. Thursday. Yeah. But all these effects are starting now. Like these, I mean, if you haven't evacuated now, you're already feeling the effects of this because mm -hmm. when the eye wall makes landfall, half the storms already come through, you know? Yeah. So they're already experiencing, you know, and we've all been through this, right? We've all been through this, but every single storm is a little bit different. Um, how it hits, how low the pressure is, how tight the mm -hmm. eye wall is, if there's any shear winds that are going to break it up. Uh, what kind of land masses it's hitting, where it's hitting, like all those things affect, you know, uh, also how much storm surge is going to push ahead of it. Mm -hmm. um, this is moving pretty slow. And so it's had its opportunity to pull all that water and push it up into the bay. Well, especially uh, like Tampa Bay there, where it's going in is perfect for stacking water up. And we, oh, see, yeah. we even see it here. In fact, Keith and I were talking about it yesterday um during one of the storms i can't remember which one it was we didn't get the i think it was rita if i'm not mistaken or one of them we because we had a north wind and it drove the water to the east end of east bay and actually flooded 120 or highway 87 on the east end because it was stacking up on the bay and came across the marsh there you made a comment you have a employee down there and you told him, man, yeah. you need to get out. I did. I told and, him yesterday. He's like, Oh, I think I'll wait till tomorrow. I said, do not wait till tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, today don't wait. I said, you need to go now. Like, do not wait. I said, because I said, and don't go North because it is lined, up, lined up, up and they're running get, out of gas. I said, people are running out of gas. They're getting stranded on the highway. There's not, you know, there's no movement going North. Everybody's just kind of stuck. So I said, go south, go to Miami, go to Fort Lauderdale, go to the Keys, go mm -hmm. somewhere south where you're getting out of that storm, you know, area. You can kind of reassess and see, OK, is our is my home OK? Do mm -hmm. I have power? Do I have electricity? Because those are the you know, you might have no damage to your home. But if you don't have power and electricity, I mean, you they might were, have they water. Telling, I mean, telling people that if you stay in an area that they're either suggesting you leave or mandatory, you need to have enough supplies for two weeks. And that's what that's I've right. heard here. You know, whenever like Burl was coming in, I told people ahead of time, you know, if you have health problems, you know, it's a good idea to leave because we could be without power, even right. down there, hitting down there for a week, you know, and well, I went and got gas for the generator. Um, Burl was a category one. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have a generator and I was lucky enough that my generator um, well, it didn't work. We had to go, we had to go play with it a little bit. Finally got it to work. But, um, uh, once we got it going, it was fine. And we ran for two days, no problem. Uh, we got power back on day three, which was really quick. I'm like, yeah. but there was a lot of, some of my employees, you know, it was five days, seven mm -hmm. days, 10 days. Like there was one, the, lo the longest that we had was somebody that was out of power for 10 days. Yeah. That's and, in the you heat. know, and they did, that's just a long yeah. time, especially in July to be, you know, without power, electricity, internet. I mean, it's, and Burl was a one. And this is, they just had Helene two weeks ago, mm -hmm. went right through that area, already flooded, already. I mean, I've seen photos of people had to have their houses gutted. They've, they've already started their, you know, their cleanup, which is what you do after a storm, right? Helene was, was a really bad event and then it moved up into the Carolinas and everything and just Tennessee and just devastated, devastating up there. Just devastated that whole area uh, because they had already been experiencing a lot of uh, rain and, and everything and the way it concentrated it just it's just like a mm -hmm. funnel it just came right down those mountains and just flooded everything well, so every single storm is different the track is different the conditions that it's going into is different so we just can't be we have to be vigilant. We can't mm -hmm. take advantage of the fact that, oh, we've been through a storm before. We've been through a one. We've been through a five. We've been through whatever. Every single storm is different. You have to take them all very seriously. Right, right. Um, we're going to have to wind this up. Uh, you know, it's hard to imagine, like, like Ike. I think it was actually the wind was a 
cat two, but the storm surge was a cat right. three or four. And with that eye, they were talking about uh, earlier in the week, because it's so small, it can really spin up. It's not a four foot, four mile wide eye or a five mile wide eye or 20 mile. It was like, or maybe it was. It was four, four miles, miles it was wide. Four it was miles tight. Versus 20 miles. 20, so yeah. You're condensing all that spin from, from a typical 20, 22 mile wide mm -hmm. eye right. down, you know, 75% into that. Yeah. It's going to spin. And, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, it'll drop down to a three, you know, but that water's already starting to stack. Water's already being pushed ahead of the yeah, storm. And, and that's, so, that's already, that intensity is already headed that way. And they've already done a pretty good job of predicting that and telling people in low lying areas to get, to get to high ground or get inland uh, at the very, very least get inland, uh, even if they can't fully evacuate. Right. So, um, you know, they evacuated Fort Myers beach and Sanibel and Captiva and all the little islands around mm -hmm that because just like Bolivar, I mean, the, the population there is a retired population for the most part. People go to Florida to retire, enjoy that lifestyle. But when you have emergencies and things like this, where you're talking about evacuation, being cut off from medical services, being cut off from food and mm -hmm. water, electricity, it's just really hard physically on the body to be in those kind of conditions for an extended for period long. of time, especially if you have any underlying medical issues. Yeah. So I, I would, Definitely not recommend it. <laughs> I would have bought not. a couple cases of beanies and weenies, a couple cases of spam and That's two right. or three loaves of bread and some mustard. And, you know, yeah. uh, at least you can eat. You may yeah, have we, an we belly, used but... our grill the last time and we were cooking. We have those little pot things and we uh -huh. were cooking on the little pot thing and we were grilling stuff. So I was like, well, I mean, we got meat. So we'll That's just grill. That's what we've done know? is we clean out the freezer, you know, even though we have a generator, we cook outside. So, well, by the time everyone sees this, uh, we'll know exactly what's going on with exactly. Milton. And uh, I want to send out from Team Bolivar and everyone our prayers to Florida, uh, even up into the Carolinas for what they've been through. We've been through the storm part, not the flooding part, but uh, it's going to be, you know, a long road to recovery. But I know from the experience here, if the businesses want to come back, you know, it comes back a lot quicker because that's why Bolivar came back so quick after Ike was the yeah. businesses hit the ground running, cleaning and opened up, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there. And then the people come back. So yeah, Americans are resilient. You know, we're, we're resilient and we're going to we're going to build back we're and we're going to come back. So, and don't forget, hurricane season does not end until November 30th. We cannot let our guard down. Okay. <laughs> There's still activity out there. Well, we got to keep our eyes on it. So, yeah. So, well, Shonda's going to take a little break next week, uh, but I'll be back and keep y'all informed on what's going on with the Twia saga um, about the rate increase. We're going to find out on the 15th, and she's going to keep me informed on that so that we can go ahead and let you know what you need to do, whether we need to start emailing the governor or if it's set in stone. And then we'll be back with uh, her the following week on, we'll probably do an up. Oh, you didn't move enough. Uh, I didn't move enough. An overview on what happened with Twia and why it went the direction it did. And that'll be the week, uh, that'll be about the 21st, up oh, wrong month, uh, the 25th probably. Um, that we do that show. So it's not over. Shonda, thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to head on out until next time. I'm David with Bolivar Live. Y'all have a great day, great week. Come see us. God bless and bye-bye.